And what the heck, let's do a, an episode on sharpening chisels. I suppose a lot of people out there probably have really insights for this on YouTube. I imagine if I typed that up, there's probably a thousand blokes showing you how to do this, but what the heck, let's do it anyway. Over here, especially on this old Titan chisel, this is a beauty. I must find out from John how old that is actually. Uh, I'm not sure. Next time he gives me a phone call, I have to say, hey, tell me about your chisels. What's the history of these ones? But this one's a bit bigger than my other ones. It looks like about a one and a half inch, one and a quarter. About just one and a quarter inch. There you go, you tell that right here. It's not actually written. It's stamped with uh, Titan Australia, but there's nothing else stamped on it that I can see uh, embedded in there, like no sizes or anything like that. So, uh, I have to give that a rub back to find out, but I'm pretty sure by looking at it that that's all it says. Yeah, it's 31.5 mil. What's that imperial? There you go, sit there, one and a quarter inch dirt on the other side. Idiot. Right, uh, this stone, it's, it has got a slight chip in it, just at the tip there. So we'll see, we can actually, it's not too deep, so we might try and remove that. We'll take out the fine stone. And you see here, at least with the stones, you've got two grits on it. That's the coarsest grit, that's the medium, and then you've got fine. And if you've just already got a fairly sharp chisel and you just want to hone it up a bit, you don't need to go to this one, like, like the one I was just using then. That's, I could just I would go straight to the fine uh, stone with that one. Have a bit of rag nearby. This is a beautiful dude. I, I'm pretty sure this is made in America, but I've had this since 1984. It's one of the first little tools that I got when I was in the hardware store working there, and they, they encouraged me to get one of these. And I must admit, I'm surprised I haven't seen a lot more people with these in their workshop. But it even tells you on the side of a chisel projection, uh, 30 degrees or 25 degrees, and uh, if you've got a, a planer blade for your, your, your block plane, which is a nice, it's a brand new block plane, just made just the other day, look at that, probably two days old. Uh, something like that, you put the planer blade in there and it'll give you the angle for that, you just measure out the front. I'll just use that to, uh, this thing is like two bucks or something at the shop. Probably a dollar or something like that. I think I've got two of them. They're not, not very good, but they're good enough to do something like this. So obviously you want your angle down that way. Actually, does this thing go wide enough? If it doesn't... I haven't seen these exactly in the, in the store. It's probably a litchy nose today. I think it's just the, coming up springtime, pollen season. There you go, plenty of room. Uh, but this is made really well. It doesn't say made in China on it, so I'm pretty sure the store that I worked at only sold quality items, so it's probably made in America, if not made in Canada. Canadians are quite good when it comes to their woodworking stuff. Uh, they know their timber. Go away, Mozzie, you're not invited. So this one doesn't... Uh, these ones have like a, a chamfered angles in it to help your average chisel you know, slot into it and keep it still, but this one doesn't have... doesn't have that. Easier to go that way. On the top. No, going underneath. It doesn't matter where up and down there it is, as long as your projection from the end of here is correct from there to there, that roller wheel will get your, your angle right. So I'll just get it in roughly. I'll just take it as you can get to do it up lightly with my fingers. Now, what angle is that? That's sticking out about that far. Looks like it's a bit too far. I would say it's, um, if it's 40 mil out. It's a 25 degree angle. Now I've still got no electricity at the moment, so I can't see a damn thing in here. I really could do with the light in here, but uh, the sun's shining. That's a bit higher than 40. Did we go off? It is what it is. Making this look right, really easy, am I? I can't see it. Nuts. Okay, there. That's 40 mil there. And that goes to there. Then tighten her up. Just double check it. This one doesn't really quite sit the same, it's got very square edges on, on the chisel. 
it's good solid steel though, you can feel it in the, in the steel, of it. that makes sense that you can feel steel and you know that it's, it's good steel. And, uh, getting so used to Chinese made rubbish, the Chinese steel is terrible. This is where they water it down with water, I don't know, they just water their steel down. Yeah, it's not strong stuff at all. 40 mil. Okay, so we got that. Now, well, I want to do this up really tight because uh, you don't want it to move. Once you start planing and you've got an angle, even if I'm like a milli fraction wrong, it doesn't matter as long as it stays consistent. We're all going with the hard block. Use that arrow gun. It's a quick advert, isn't it? I don't know why mossies always go for their elbows. Go for my elbows anyway. Class is the heel. And then just, you don't want to pick on one spot of your stone and start ch ch channeling your stone in like that. You want to keep it moved around, move around so I tend to shift from left to right because it's got a parallel roller wall, roller ball, sorry. Uh, I tend to rather than go swirl around like that, which is a technique, I tend to just shift it from left to right and always keep changing. And run the oil down the back of the blade, let it slide off there. And as you push the oil towards the end of the block, you could lift, you lift up your stone, and you can grab it and drag it back and keep that oil on there. Like so. Also, another thing is to rotate your stone and, uh, periodically and try and keep it even. shiny around the sides around there and, it, and it's still dark in, in that middle bit so you know that it's, it's bold in that, in that way. Uh, could also be the block itself uh, is, uh, is bold a little bit that's why it's missing the, the centre a bit but either way these are both going to help each other out so when you're basically honing you've got to not just think of the chisel but the stone itself as well so you, you keep the stone flat Keep the chisels flat and kind of moving it around and you, you work the two together. Of course, one just one here wears down fairly quick and you can see it sliding up. slip you want this really tight make sure that's locked in there because if that just moves even so much as slightly in the uh, guide uh, you're gonna it's gonna change your pitch and then everything you've just put into uh, into doing you've just wasted you have to start again kind of thing because you're changing your angle all over again so if you can keep it consistent it just speeds things up a bit I'll reverse that and I'll, I'll edit this bit out I'll just show when I finally got it See, it's just starting to scuff the middle bit now, so just sort of, that's not far from done then.
As you can see, it's, it could, it's coming into the side and it's just more around that centre bit, but you can see scratch marks through it so that it really does not, not have far to go at all. Whoops a daisy. Birds here in the Dundas bush just, oh, I think they're globally known. Any ornithologist out there would know the Dundas bush of Western Australia. Some unique birds, beautiful song. Going camping out here early morning, the bird song is just magical. It's much better to wake up to than the sound of an alarm clock that's going to drag you off into peak hour traffic. I'd much rather wake up and those birds. see it, it's quite uh, shiny all around there, and again, the, the chips at the tip though, I'm hoping that uh, by the time I've get that shiny all the way across, like that little tiny chip there should have hopefully gone with it, but if not, I'm not going to grind, you know, half a mill of steel off the thing just for the sake of that, because that's not going to affect what we're doing, not the slightest, alright, well, I'll get this thing shiny by rubbing it down and I'll Spare you the, uh, the torture. Okay, I can just quick update. I just noticed as I was on the softer side, on the, on the coarser side, sorry, that uh, you can actually see in the steel here, there are actually little dimples just from age, just from, uh, just from it sitting in the elements, all dimpled up. But because uh, you probably would notice there's a curve in it, and that's probably the stone is curved, and I just can't seem to get it straight. It's, it's rounding this off more than it is the, getting the stone flat. So I've switched it over to the medium, to the uh, the medium side because it's a lot firmer, and I know that is straight. So as I've started to plane it, I don't know if you can see it. Or, well, sorry, wrong, wrong angle. It was bad. Uh, you can see I'm getting it more in the centre here. It's getting a lot shiny, and it's starting to flatten that 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 rounded bit off. So I should be able to go at it with this hard bit, and that should then neaten that up. And it should be a old chisel, but a but a beauty. A chisel would know different. While I do this, just a couple of tips. That a lot of people will head for the bench grinder when sharpening chiselled. Uh, maybe that's how the band Cold Chisel got his, the, the idea for the name of the band. But probably not. But you keep the chisel cold. Like you, you, a bench grinder at high speed. If you are going to do it, the harder the steel, the coarser the grit. So you want a fairly coarse grit wheel. But avoid doing because when you heat... Going at it fast, you're going to heat the, the, the steel up. It's going to change the temperament of the steel. And you're going to find that that chipping of the uh, chisel is very, very easy to do. And it just weakens it. And it really doesn't... Which you, the best thing, I don't have one with me at the moment, would be great, is a slow-turning wet stone. It's set up and just hone, and just let it gently uh, hone that off the, off the big, large wheel. The larger the wheel, the better. And have it uh, you know, constantly dipped in water. And it just brings up the best edge. And it keeps the chisel at a... At a constant temperature and you'll always, you'll always have the, it'll just make your chisel last longer. So avoid bench grinders, I, I really, unless you, no, nah, avoid them <laughs> if you can, unless you've got a lot of damage done to the chisel, it's been chipped up and something going to, if you have hit it with a bench grinder, you might as well then turn that chisel into one of your rough chisels that you just use for, you know, smacking bits and pieces out with, I don't know, I have a wood chisel that I actually use for tiling, but uh, no. Nah. It doesn't really get hit, it gets hit with a brick, but even though the ends all chipped up, doesn't matter. It, it gets into the, uh, the bricks really well when you want to try and do something fine and fiddly with your tiling. Yeah. Or, or your screed, not screwing up your screed and that. A chisel's fantastic to scrap it up, but you'll, you'll never use it for woodwork again. It's just a cheapy for that. So, yeah, a few tips. Avoid the bench grinder. Look after your stones, don't drop them. 
crack your stone in half and it's pretty much useless now because you've got no space to work with. And, uh, this one's pretty old as you can tell. So it doesn't, the age of the stone doesn't matter. Anyway, now I'm going to go on. Let's have a quick look at it together. Yeah, it's not bad. It's coming up alright. Let's have a look at it. Then. But, uh, Get the, if I pivot around you might be able to change the light but you can see now this this one because it's a flat bed is really doing the center now you can see it's gone all shiny there and those little dimply bits it's just a little trace of them off on the tip so I've done quite a good job so I'll put a little bit of a haze there and a little bit of a haze there on that side but you can see now it's more straight across the center there's only just the end bits there that are curved down indicating we are getting a straight edge back I think, uh, I, think I did that I think it was straight before and I made a bit of a mess of it but uh, that's that, this this it chisel up really well. I can't wait to use this. This is gonna be really good. Well, we're starting to run out of sunlight, and we're starting to run out of battery, so I'm just gonna quickly speed this up. Okay, we pretty much got it. You know, there's, there's not much left. There to go about 90%. You can see I'm just missing a tip. The few little spots on the end there. If I kept on going, it would just make that disappear. And you can see I've almost got it leveled just by the shade. The shade of that steel on the end there. But it's good enough for what we're doing. I'd rather just move on. So we've gone to the medium grit. Put a bit of cloth down. This stone here is really fine, and it's obviously it's not meant for shaping at all. And it doesn't absorb the oil very well, as the, the course of the grit tends to really soak the oil up. So it's just like rubbing it on a piece of glass. But this will bring up a nice edge that you should be able to shave your face with. This particular block, you know, change it around a lot. Like, do not uh, hollow it out in any way. You want to really share the share the grind out over the whole stone and get the stone, keep the stone nice and flat as it wears down. Use up the whole thing. Makes the stone last longer. Makes it really easier to uh, to do. That's lovely. It's, yeah, that's sharp enough, crikey. Well, uh, there you go. That's uh, sharpening for you. And that jig is just that is just brilliant. It's just so compact. You can stick it in your toolbox or just shove it with your with your stone. A bit of oil, and that's all you need. It takes a while. As I said, the slow turning uh, wet stone would be better. So it's certainly a lot less effort for you. But, uh, at least portably anyway, you can sharpen chisels any way you like. Ta-da!